Hey there, it's Candice Esposito, the quantum health doctor. And today I want to share with you my visioning process for creating optimal health and vitality. I'm being very intentional with using the word visioning as opposed to planning, which is what we often hear about, like plan for the year ahead, right? But planning tends to get overcomplicated. You know, there's that old saying around making plans and God having a good laugh, which I think does have some merit to it for obvious reasons. So what we're going to be doing here is less about planning and more about keeping your eye on things that matter. Key markers, key gauges to ensure your success is a done deal. So this is going to be kind of a 30,000 foot view, more of a big picture visioning process. It's not going to include all the minute details or nuances because my purpose for recording this video is to give you the framework. Okay, so you have the option to then take this framework and run with it, use it yourself, implement it right away in your own life, you know, make your own iteration of it as you wish. And then if you do want one on one support, you know, to figure out those details or nuances, then I'll give you the option to work with me personally at the end of this video. So in case you're watching this video and are not familiar with me, like I said, my name is Candice. I'm a naturopathic and functional medicine doctor. And as of this recording, I have about 16 years of clinical experience, having worked with over 5,000 clients during that time. I've also worked as a master mentor to other natural healthcare practitioners, helping them grow their practices in order to serve more people in deeper ways. The process that I'm about to share with you, I personally use myself. I use it with my clients and I've used it with the practitioners that I've mentored. The start of a new year is always a really opportune time to do this. However, really any time is a good time to do this type of visioning and intention setting practice. So how do you get to where you want to go if you don't know your destination? right? Or perhaps you might know your destination, like you know where you want to go, but you don't have the roadmap, the steps to get you to where you want to go. This process will help you tackle either of those scenarios, both of those scenarios. So I'm really excited to share this with you. Let's just dive right in. Okay, how to draft your blueprint for creating optimal health and vitality. I've broken the process down into a 10 step framework. When I'm working with a client, I don't specifically say, okay, here's step one, here's step two, and you know, so on. It's more of a fluid process. It happens within the conversation that we have together. The client may not even realize that I'm applying in this framework to our work together. So what's cool is that having, you know, created this video, it guided me or kind of uh, fueled me to put this into a 10 step framework to get more clarity around this process as well, um, which I love. For our purposes, we're going to apply this framework specifically to health, but know that you can apply it to your life in general or any other aspect of your life, business, relationships, and so on. So it's widely applicable. I do recommend starting with health. Health is true wealth. If you don't have your health, those other areas in life are going to be ultimately impacted, if not immediately, definitely down the road. As the saying goes, the man with health has a thousand dreams, but the man without health has but one dream. Okay, and one last thing I'll say to preface this before we get into the actual framework. When I'm doing this process, I try to do the majority of this, this visioning work whenever possible out in nature, just using a pen and a notebook. I find that nature helps ground me, helps connect me to source. And there's something tangible, something almost magical about physically writing this down, about putting your thoughts, you know, to paper. So I encourage you to consider doing the same if possible. 
Okay, here we go. Step one. Step one is about asking yourself, what has worked so far versus what hasn't worked? So you want to remember back on this previous year. And if you have trouble, you know, thinking about the the year like that far back, you know, just go back a few months, like the most recent few months and list out everything that you can remember from that time that you know is working well in terms of supporting your health and your wellness. And then make a list of what didn't work, like what was an obstacle to healing or an obstacle to optimizing your health. Okay, so list out what worked, then list out what didn't work. Once you're done those two lists, have a look at them and ask yourself, okay, why didn't it work? Why did it work, right? So go through each one and ask why. Why it worked or why it didn't work? Now your answers to those questions are going to be hypotheses. You may not truly know why it did or didn't work and that's okay. What we're trying to go for by doing this is more to get the energy of these answers. And what I mean by that is that, you know, the the answers around what worked are going to be, uh, you know, having a higher vibration, right? They have energy to them. Whereas the things that didn't work are going to feel like a lower vibration, right? They don't have any energy behind them. And that's what you want to pay attention to. Okay, so for step one, make a list of what worked, what didn't work, and ask why. For step two, we want to consider the four pillars of health. Now, we're all familiar with three of those, mind, body, spirit. I add on environment as the fourth pillar. Okay, so the four pillars are mind, body, spirit, and environment. Okay, so what I like to do with this step is just write each of those words at the top of a page in four columns, right? Create four columns, body, mind, spirit, environment. And then under each column, list out the things that may be working, the areas or aspects under each of those categories that have been influencing your health. Okay, and in general, these are going to be things that need to be worked on or addressed. In general, they're going to be impacting your health in a more negative way. Okay, so I'll give you some examples. So under environment, it could be things like water, uh, the quality of your drinking water, or how much water you're drinking, hydration. It could be grounding, being out in nature. It could look like toxins or chemicals uh, that you may be in, be uh, exposed to in your home. It could be about sunlight exposure, just light exposure in general. It could look like uh, the home environment in which you live, right? The other people, is there conflict? Is there strain within those relationships? So think about your environment, those types of factors and their influence on your health and vitality. For body, um, these tend to be a little bit more obvious. So things like nutrition, diet, blood sugar regulation, uh, inflammation, physical activity, movement, and then you know each of the different systems in your body as well can come under physical health or the body, right? So we have the gut and gut health nervous system regulation, hormone balance, detoxification, and so on. You're going to be aware. You're going to intuitively know what these areas that need to be worked on are. They're, they're going to come up. Um, for the mind, it could look like mindset, maybe stimulating the vagus nerve, uh, you know, uh, supporting stress resiliency, how you're handling or managing stress. It could be around releasing suppressed emotions um, or building emotional intelligence. Um, spirit could look like social connection uh, and community. Like, do you feel isolated and, uh, and alone or do you um, have good connection with those around you? Uh, you feel supported. Spirit could involve healing from trauma, developmental trauma. Uh, it could be about building self-awareness, right? Connecting with one's intuition or that sixth sense, 
um, self-acceptance, self-love, self-care would come, come under spirit, spiritual consciousness, and one's connection to source or God, the universe, um, you know, whatever term you prefer to use. And of course, there's going to be overlap. You know, something in uh, one category could very well be applicable in another category, right? Like as an example, I can make a case for circadian rhythms under environment uh, as well as under body, right? So um, there's no right or wrong. You put them in whatever category you feel uh, most resonates with you. It's more about identifying what aspects are influencing your health right now. Okay, so you want to make a list of the four pillars in the specific kind of subcategories underneath those four pillars that are influencing your health right now. Step three is about making an anxiety list. And when I say an anxiety list, what are the things that keep you up at night? Or, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and can't fall back to sleep because you're thinking about these things. Okay, so a good prompt for this one is to fill in the blank. I'm afraid that blank. Okay, so just complete that sentence. Um, so it could be like, I'm afraid that if I heal myself or up-level my health, my partner is going to leave me. Or maybe I'm afraid that if I heal myself or up-level my health, I will need to leave my partner. I'm afraid that I won't make enough money this quarter to cover payroll uh, in my business. I'm afraid that if I don't address my health issues, I'm going to end up like my dad and have a heart attack, right? So I think you get the idea. I'm afraid that blank. What keeps you up at night? Okay, and that's going to be personal. Listen to your intuition again. You know, what comes up in response to this? You know, even if uh, as you're listening to this, there's probably thoughts coming up. That's what needs to come up. So trust, trust your first thoughts. Step number four is the life review. Um, so here you want to look at things like self, family, friends, other relationships, which could include uh, colleagues, uh, acquaintances, money, time, travel. So it's somewhat similar to step two. But we're looking at it more from aspects of your life, not through the lens of health specifically. Okay. And if you think of others, you know, in addition to the ones that I just mentioned, feel free to add those as well. So self, family, friends, relationships, money, time, and travel. And for each one, you want to ask yourself, what do I like about it? What do I like about you know, when I think about my family right now, what do I what do I like about it? How does that feel? What don't I like about it? Another way you can look at this is through using a rating or a scale. So on a scale of one to ten, ten being the highest, where would you rate, you know, this aspect of your life right now? So for example, if you rate family relationships as a five out of ten. You then want to ask yourself, okay, what would it look like to have that at maybe an 8 out of 10? You know, what would that look like? And what would need to happen? What would I need to do to make that happen? To create that or turn that into an 8 instead of a 5? Okay. So again, this is more through the lens of your life in general as opposed to specifically around health. And it's absolutely okay if there is overlap with step two. In fact, the areas of overlap are often the areas of greatest importance. It's kind of um, the ones that you want to pay attention to the most. There's a reason they're coming up again and again. Step five is the three years from now letter. So what I want you to do with this one is write a letter to yourself in regards to where you want to be three years from now. And you don't know, you have no idea. 
and that provides an opportunity. It gives you the opportunity to just be creative and make that into whatever it is that you desire. Okay, so here's where I want to be in regards to my health. Here is what I want life to feel like. Okay, write a letter about that to yourself. It's not a goal list. Okay, so this letter isn't about writing specific goals. So don't define the letter by your goals. Define it by what you want life to feel like every day. Describe the feeling. Okay, describe the feeling, not the thing as a goal. I'll give you a really simple, obvious example to kind of um, make that really clear. So instead of writing, uh, for example, I want $1 million in my bank account, you write instead something like, I have more than enough money always. And I feel like I don't have to worry about checking my bank account before spending that money. Right? Do you see the difference there? So instead of a specific goal, you're writing more about the feeling, how you want to feel. Okay? So that's the three years from now letter. Step six is about creating an alignment list. So at this point, you should have a lot of information, a lot of information about what's working, what's not working, a clear picture as to what it is that you do want. Like, what do you desire to create when it comes to your health and your wellness? So now what we're going to do is take that information and look at, okay, how do I get back into alignment with that vision, with that desire? So you can think of the alignment list as kind of your change list as well. Like, what do I need to change to make this happen, to create this for myself? So what are all the things I know for sure need to change in order to be in alignment with this new vision I have for myself and for my health? Okay, so it, this will often look like I need to let go of this person. I need to stop doing X, Y and Z. Okay. So what do you need to change in order to get back into alignment with this vision for yourself and for your health? Step number seven is providing yourself with possibilities or just opening up the vast number of possibilities that you have in terms of how you go about creating this. Okay, so we I call this the blueprint options. And you're going to give yourself three options to choose from. Think of this as how do I get there? I know where I want to go now. How do I get there? Okay, so at this point, we have a better idea of where you want to go, what the issues are, what needs to change. How do I get to this new level? And you want to map out three blueprints, okay? So again, you could um, write out three columns. In column one, blueprint number one. Column two is blueprint number two. And then column three is blueprint number three. And under each, you write action steps. So blueprint number one may look like taking this action, and then this action, and then this action. Whereas blueprint number two is going to be different. It would look like taking this action, then this action, then this action. And then blueprint number three is a different iteration of that, right? So you're basically giving yourself three different paths to get to where you want to go. Because there's never just one path or only one way of doing something. Okay, so we want to open up the realm of possibilities in terms of how we can actually go about creating this new vision for yourself. Okay, once you have the three blueprint options mapped out, look at them and then ask yourself, okay, logically, which of these blueprints makes the most sense? Which of these blueprints feels good? Which of these blueprints gets me excited? Which of these blueprints feels like an opportunity? Which of these blueprints resonates the most with me and my values? And which of these blueprints feels the lightest? 
or the most freeing is another way of saying that. Okay. You don't have to answer that right away. Don't choose the blueprint option right away. Just sit on it for a little while. Step away. Go for a walk. Get out in nature. Sleep on it. Uh, meditate. Go on a trip. Like whatever you need to do to take a break from the framework for a little bit. And then once you're ready to come back, step number eight is pretty simple and straightforward. From um, this date to this date, I am radically committing to blueprint number and then choose your blueprint. So step eight is all about making a choice, making the decision. Okay, make the decision of which blueprint you are going to use to create that new vision for your health um, and yourself. Okay, so from this date to this date, fill in the dates, I am radically committing to blueprint number, and then whatever number you choose, one, two, or three. Step nine is asking yourself then what is needed. So what are the resources that I'm going to need to implement this health blueprint? So that could look like support from others, right? Enrolling others into this process with you. Family, friends, mentors, health team members, peer support groups, community. It's not you against the world. And it's not going to work if it's you against the world. I, I can definitely tell you that. So enroll your community. Um, bring community into this process as a support uh, resource for you. Resources could also look like investments. Uh, it could be investments of time, investment of effort, investment of money. It could look like setting up your environment, right? Are there any aspects in your environment that need to change in order to support you to be as successful as possible? So gather your resources. What do you need to bring in, to gather, you know, to put in place in order to uh, make this vision a reality for yourself? And then finally, step 10 is asking yourself, well, what is my number one focus? What am I focusing on? So what is the first action step necessary to make this a reality? What step can I take right now today to put this into motion? Okay. And ideally it is right now today. Okay. And then have faith that the next step the step after this one will become clear once you have taken this first step. So you only have to, you know, know what this first step is and make the decision or the choice to focus on that and that alone. Don't worry about the future steps that need to or ultimately will be taken. Okay, so that's the framework. And then it's just a matter of rinsing and repeating. Um, it can definitely be helpful to do a modified version of this process monthly. So the more you do it, the quicker this process will become. Um, it's, it can be uh, a lot, you know, in, in terms of time for reflection when you're doing it the first time. But essentially upon, um, you know, subsequent attempts at this, you're just going to ask yourself, okay, what's working? What's not working? What feels good? What doesn't feel good? What's still keeping me up at night, right? What, what am I still, you know, waking up uh, thinking about? And then you, know, with that information, update your alignment list and go from there. Okay, so um, there's a lot of nuance, a lot of details that you can incorporate this uh, into this process, into this framework that I haven't gone through. There's many ways to personalize it. As I said from the beginning, you know, take this, create your own iteration of it, your own version, um, and, you know, jump into this. Okay, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. What I like about it is that it's very intention-based, Right here is what I want to create. Um, I'm not a huge fan necessarily of goals, smart goals, that type of thing. I think they're applicable for certain areas. But when it comes to health creation um, and really manifesting or bringing that desire, that vision uh, into the physical plane for yourself, I think this type of process uh, serves that much, much better. Okay. This is the health and vitality I wish to create. And know that it's already done. It exists. That you simply need to 
now set up the parameters to pull it into the physical realm. Okay, if it didn't already exist, you wouldn't be able to envision it in the first place. Okay, if it didn't already exist, you couldn't desire it in the first place. It exists. It's yours already. It's done. What this process will help you do is, like I said, manifest that reality into the physical plane for yourself. Okay, so once you have this completed, um, you know, put it up where you can see it on a regular basis. So some people like to put it as the background image on your computer or on your cell phone. You know, tape it to a wall beside your work desk. Uh, put it on, uh, you know, next to your um, next to you on your bedside table. These kind of areas where you're going to see it on a regular basis. Because what you pay attention to grows. All right, and as a bonus tip, if you want to kind of go to the next level with this, act as if it is already done. Act as if this is already a done deal. Okay, so what would you feel like if this was already done? Feel that. Feel those feelings. Would the decisions you make on a daily basis look different if this was already done, if that was your reality right now? Make the decisions from that state. Make your daily decisions from that state, from that person. Okay, that's that can be kind of a game changer when you add on that component to this framework as well. So I mentioned at the beginning that if you wish to have some help with this, some one-on-one -on -one support, I'd love to help you out. This is one of my favorite ways to support clients. I, I love working with clients using this type of a framework. Um, so what I've done is included a link below this video if you wish to book a vitality envisioning session with me personally, and we can do just that. So doing this type of work can take a lot of time. Like I said, it's, it's worth it. It can take a lot of time though, whereas if you wish to do this with someone who has experience, who has done this time and time again, not only for herself, but for others as well, who can say, hey, this is the best blueprint for you. Like, I know this is the best blueprint for you. The process becomes a lot quicker. Okay, so that's kind of the, the main benefit from getting the one-on-one -on -one support. You can perhaps even take a quantum jump, right? So thank you very much for sharing this time with me. I appreciate you. I love you. If I can be of any assistance, please don't um, hesitate to reach out to me. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.